Welcome back my dear child. Now in this particular module, as you can see on to the topic, we are going to discuss something which is called as laws of chemical combination. Who has helped us formulate the laws of chemical combination is something that we should have a look at. Have a look. So now we have a total of two scientists. The first one by the name of Antony Loiser and second by the name of Joseph Louis Proust. Are they the ones who have done the work individually? No. They have taken the help of several other scientists as well and have formulated the laws of chemical combination for us. Over here, one must understand that these were all quantitative experiments where all numbers are involved. So, the laws of chemical combination are as follows. Who is the first one? The first one law over here is the law of conservation of matter. Something you and I have discussed in the first module. And now it is the time that we are going to discuss the second law in front of you. And who is that? We are going to discuss the law of constant proportion. Now for discussing the law of constant proportion, let me give you certain examples for the same. In the law of constant proportion, we are going to take the help of Joseph Louis Proust and he says that when we talk about water which is packed in the ice shelves, we get the formula as H2O. Now understand, I have a total of two atoms of hydrogen and a single atom of oxygen. When you take the masses of hydrogen and oxygen into consideration, I am going to get the ratio as 1 is to 8. Now, is that the ratio which is valid for water which is only locked in the polar ice caps? Not at all. Have a look. Even when we talk about river water, the formula over here happens to be exactly the same. The ratio over here also happens to be exactly the same. And finally, even if I go for water which is present in the sea, the formula over here once again is exactly the same and the ratio in which hydrogen and oxygen are going to combine with respect to each other is also exactly the same. What is the ratio if I ask you? Absolutely, the ratio is going to be 1 is to 8. Now, we have similar examples which we are going to discuss in detail. Let us discuss water first appropriately. Number 1, so if we have 18 grams of water, Water is given by the formula H2O, obtained from any kind of source. It could be river water, it could be ice water, it could be sea water. It is going to contain 2 grams of hydrogen given by the formula H and 16 grams of oxygen given by the formula O. Hence, the proportion of hydrogen and oxygen by weight, if reduced properly, is going to come as 1 is to 8. After that, who do we have next? In this particular case, we must discuss other compounds. For example, we have carbon dioxide given by the formula CO2. How many grams of carbon dioxide am I going to consider? 44 grams of carbon dioxide to be precise. Within those 44 grams, 12 grams is going to be of carbon, 32 grams is going to be of oxygen and hence the proportion of carbon and oxygen by weight in carbon dioxide is going to be exactly 3 is to 8. Let us move ahead. Over here, one must understand for copper oxide, given by the formula CuO. How much amount of copper oxide am I taking? I am taking exactly 8 grams of copper oxide. If I take it from any source, the amount of copper within the copper oxide is going to be 6.4 grams and the same copper oxide is going to contain 1.6 grams of oxygen. Hence, the proportion of copper and oxygen by weight in copper oxide is exactly going to be 4 is to 1. Let us highlight that one last time and what does that give me? That gives me something which is called as the law of constant proportions. So, all of the above examples verify the law of constant proportion perfectly. 